Hey there guys, welcome back to the workshop. Today we're going to be discussing grinder techniques. So this video is going to be an in-depth look into how I approach grinding. Now this is going to be mostly applicable to belt grinders, but some of the techniques you may be able to use with stuff like bench grinders and hard stone grinders. Uh, most of you who are practicing bladesmithing or perhaps blacksmithing as well will have some form of belt grinder. Whether that's a 2x72 like this one, a 2x72 by Grizzly which is the more vertical uh, form, a 2x48 or a 2x60 or even a 1x30. For a lot of uh, your work, especially in knife making, you're going to need one of these eventually if you want to do a lot of them. So we're going to cover a few of the basic techniques that I use uh, when, I, when it comes to using the grinder to make a knife. So, to make this as approachable as I can to most people, I'm only going to be using my grinder in the flat platen setup, vertical. Because most uh, 2x72s and 2x48s and all that kind of stuff have a flat platen in a more or less vertical state. Not all of them have contact wheels or a variable speed drive. So, we're not going to talk about the more complex issues surrounding this, uh, although if you are interested in that, I will be doing a deeper dive on my Patreon. Um, but for today, we're going to be covering techniques that will be used with a grinder with a flat platen. Of course, before we get started, the most important thing you've got to remember is safety, so your respirator and your glasses. Even when grinding steel, the steel dust is incredibly toxic to your uh, lungs over a long period of time and you can get silicosis from the grinding media that comes off the belt. So I decided that I would film the uh, techniques in the order that I would use them when I'm finishing a knife that I have forged. This, these techniques can be used in knife making where you're just taking a bar of steel and turning it into a knife as well and the process is pretty much exactly identical. But uh, to start off with, we're going to start with this blade which is a blade that I forged in a live stream recently and we're going to grind the profile. Now, profiling can be done a number of ways, and there are two ways to approach the belt, or, you know, there are two normal ways to approach the belt. One is perpendicular, or what I, you know, what's called horizontal grinding, and one is parallel, which is uh, otherwise known as linear grinding. It's really important that your platen comes just ahead of your contact wheels on your grinder. If you have contact wheels uh, above and below your platen, if the platen is set backwards then what will happen is, is that the belt will dish between those two wheels and you'll end up with you know not straight lines. The platen should be in contact with the belt or slightly out from the wheels so that it contacts the platen directly and doesn't contact the wheels. Especially because if the wheels are ahead you may end up grinding divots into the back of your blade. So I've gone ahead and added my tool rest to my grinder. Now I do a lot of freehand grinding, but the tool rest is an invaluable tool for those who are just getting started or people who have been doing it for quite a while. And there are some things that I use the tool rest for all the time. Uh, the tool rest in this case actually loops around the sides of the belt, which is incredibly useful when you're doing thin material so that it doesn't get sucked down between the belt and the tool rest, which can happen uh, and is really scary and also dangerous for the belt and your hands. So make sure that you're really careful when you're doing this kind of stuff that you actually have a, a solid grip on the material. The first thing we're going to look at with the tool rest is profile grinding. Now in any knife, the first thing you're looking at is the profile. And the profile is the outside shape of the knife. And this is forged 80% to shape, roughly. But some blades will be less forged to shape, some blades will just be a bar of steel. And if you've drawn your design out in a bar of steel, you're going to need to cut that design out on the grinder. And there are two ways to do that. The first is perpendicular or horizontal grinding. I prefer to do this with the tool rest because it provides more resistance against the belt, which will try and pull the material downwards. And you can move along using just the left hand with, and having the blade contact the belt rather than having to have both hands on it. Now, you can do this freehand without the, without the tool rest. You just need to have a much steadier hand and a much tighter grip with your, uh, with your off hand to guide that material and not let it get sucked down by the belt. 
So I'll just show you how I do that now. Now while horizontal grinding is very useful for following lines on a bar or uh, for even chasing out large lumps in your material, what it's not good is good at providing smooth, even, consistent lines across a curve or providing nice, long, flat planes unless you're scribing lines and stuff like that. In order to do that, I prefer linear grinding and linear grinding requires the use of the entire platen to, use, to provide a clean and even surface to your blade. And this is a way that you get nice, even, consistent curves, especially on the edge of your knife, the pro edge profile. Um, you can do that horizontal grinding, but I find it more reliable to use linear grinding, especially with the nice, long, flat platen like I have here. So I'll show you how I use that now. You can think of your contact with the platen in two planes, the x-axis and the y-axis, or is it the other way around, x-axis and y-axis. Either way, the one easy to control axis is our vertical, right? We can control where we are this way, but it's hard to control where we are this way. And that can extend when you're doing horizontal grinding into a little bit of waggle. And it doesn't take a lot. It only takes a little bit of pressure outside the belt to get the corner to cut in. So horizontal grinding can end up with wavy lines, whereas the lateral grinding, the only risk you have is rotation either side. And what can happen is you end up with a slightly off-level uh, spine or an off-level blade, not that the blade really matters. With the spine, all you have to do is come back, make contact where you were before, and rotate it back to where it should be 90 degrees. So now that we've used linear grinding to do the spine and the bevel, we need to get inside this area here and create this notch. Because this is obviously a little ugly from the forging. Now I can't really do that linear grinding. I could use the contact wheel up here, if I have a contact wheel on my grinder, to cut that in. But there is a second way to do it, which is horizontal grinding using the edge of the belt. And this is why you want a nice wide 2 inch platen for your 2 inch belt if you have a 2 inch grinder or a 4 inch platen for a 4 inch belt so that you can have the belt directly on the edge of your, pl of your platen. If it's not on the edge of your platen you should have an adjuster screw up here or somewhere around the, um, around the grinder that allows you to move the belt side to side. If I slow this down and I screw this that way the belt moves over. If I screw it back the other way, the belt moves back this way, you can see. So, it's important to have the belt just, just over the edge of your platen. You don't want it exactly in line with the platen, because what will happen is that the platen will actually inhibit you grinding around that corner. So you want the platen to be just behind the edge of the belt. And now what we're going to do is cut that little choil in and then flatten out this and this area is one area where you can almost never use a linear grinding technique you can go at a slight angle and that's useful for something else that i'll show you in a bit but for this instance we're going to use the tool rest i'm going to cut that in
While that can be done freehand, it's much easier to use the tool rest to get that nice fine control and not have to worry about the, bl the uh, blade bouncing up and down when contacting the belt. So now we've created the curve in there, fits my finger nicely. It's nice and comfortable to hold now without that bulge. We're ready to move on to bevel grinding. I quickly switched out to a 120 to examine one more technique before we move on to bevels. When I'm grinding a knife that has, uh, is going to have a polished finish, now in this case, uh, in this knife, I'm going to have uh, the forged scale left on the spine and uh, on the ricasso. But on a, on a blade that's going to have a polished finish, I need to be able to take all this material off. And you can do it horizontally, but it's really not advisable because, again, you get that waggle, and there's no, ch there's no way of being sure that you're actually square to the belt, and that's how you end up with uh, weird parallelograms on your ricassos. Instead, what I use is linear grinding. I hold onto the tang, and I use my other hand to provide pressure to grind away the surface of that material. Now, I've changed that to a 120 grit belt because this is ground fairly close to finish before heat treat. Uh, but what we're going to do is do that. You can, in the event that your platen is too long, you can grind at an angle. The more surface contact you have with the belt, the less likely you are to create uh, dips and waves in your finished piece. Now I didn't show up in the video, um, but I just off camera I did uh, do a little bit of that of grinding, and I did what's called knuckling the belt. Um, <laughs> because I was distracted by the camera and because I was trying to work around the tripod, I um, ended up accidentally knocking my knuckle on the uh, idler wheel, the top idler wheel. It's safe to say that if you touch the belt while it's moving, it's going to give you a nasty surprise, and it's also going to make sure that you remember that this is a dangerous machine. Luckily it was only a 120 grit belt and I only tapped it a little bit but it did manage to scrape off the top layer of skin so be very careful uh, when grinding guys. Now bevel grinding is where the rubber meets the road so to speak. You have um, many ways to carry out grinding bevels. The simplest way or the uh, more, most common way is to grind freehand which is to place the material on the belt, no tool rest or anything like that, and simply grind in your bevels freehand. Now that takes a lot of practice. Uh, it, it can get a lot easier as you go along, and if you've forged your bevels accurately, then that pre-forged bevel gives you a guide to follow so that you don't have to worry so much about what your angle is. But for beginners, there are two methods that I normally uh, give you and those both involve the tool rest. The first and most common method of grinding bevels is the jig method. Now this is the simplest jig that I could possibly imagine uh, and all it is is a scrap off cut of 2x4 that I've used a plane to, grow, to uh, cut a 5 degree angle on one face. Now you could change the angle depending on what you want if you have a table saw, it's a lot easier because then you can just set the table saw to your desired angle, cut the face off, and you have your jig. And I've just put these two nails in there so that when I come to grind my bevels, all I have to do is rest the knife on there, and I can grind away to my heart's content. Now, I don't use jigs. Uh, that's just a personal choice, especially because I forge my bevels in. I find it actually takes away from my ability to make alterations. Uh, it's just a personal choice. It's not a, you know, don't use jigs or anything like that. Jigs are a perfectly fine way to grind your bevels. It's just that I personally don't use them. This is just a demonstrative piece uh, to show you what jigs can be like, and I'll quickly grab a piece of flat bar and show you what they do.
Okay, so this was a terrible example because this uh, piece of scrap off cut 5160 was uh, bent and uh, bowed, but you can see that there's a bevel started there, and I ground the face off so you can see the transition a little bit better. It's a bit wonky because I only did it quickly, and this is a very worn out belt. But uh, yeah, that is what a jig can do for you. It's a controlled angle. You don't need to think about your angles. You just need to think about the blade itself. Now, when using a jig, if you have a round point, then you can't just pull straight through. You are going to need to pull outwards at the end to get your curve in the tip. So as you go along, you're going to have to come along and then out to follow that tip. Not that, not that drastically, obviously, but um, you'll find that you'll get a hang of it with the, with the jig. The same is said of all grinding, is that you have to either raise the tip up or lift it out in order to get that curve. But with the jig, it's a lot easier. So I highly suggest that you try jigs out. There are a thousand different uh, jig videos on YouTube you can find them uh, quite easily um, just look up knife grinding jigs uh, I believe my simple little life has one um, and yeah just try them out because they are a really good way to have control over your bevel angle the second tool rest method and the one I most commonly use when using the tool rest and not freehand grinding is the push stick method in this is a preheat treat grinding technique I'll just lower the camera a little um, this is a preheat treat grinding technique that you then uh, substitute the stick for your fingers when you come to post heat treat grinding. And that's so that you can feel the heat on the blade and therefore not ruin your temper. But before heat treat we don't have to worry about that. When using the push stick method, the stick stays still. It is simply applying pressure to the belt in order to take off material on the, uh, on the, belt, on the blade. The other hand, the off hand, whether that be your right or your left, depending on which bevel you're doing, simply pulls the blade along. It doesn't provide pressure, because what you don't want to do is use the uh, stick as a, a lever to actually leverage the blade into the corner of the belt, because that will create a nice divot in your, uh, in your blade. And all I'm going to do is pr uh, provide pressure, and the higher the stick goes, the steeper my bevel will be. The lower the stick goes, the lower the angle will be, and the closer it will crawl towards the spine. So this is actually a very controllable method of taking off material precisely where you want to. Now you notice the grind lines are probably a little shaky, um, they're a little wavy. I'm not too worried about that at this stage. What I am concerned about is making sure that I'm not removing material from the spine before removing material from the edge. Because the last thing I want is for the spine to step in here around my plunge cut. The other reason that the grind line is so wavy is because this belt is incredibly worn out. The reason that you want to use a worn out belt for all of your rough grinding straight out of the forge if you haven't taken the time to soak this in vinegar is because that scale is significantly harder than any material that you'll have on a belt. And you will kill the belt very quickly. That, that belt is no longer good for use uh, as a finishing belt or as a, uh, as a grinding belt. It is only useful for removing that scale off the material. So what I use is a very worn out belt to do my profiling and to take the scale off the material before I go to a sharp belt, a new belt, to do my final grinding to get all of my lines perfect. But what I can do is I can finish this bevel up and this bevel freehand just to show you a couple of techniques that are involved in freehand grinding. So I've flipped the camera around and gone behind the grinder because for this the bevel angle doesn't change. You're still trying to follow that bevel uh, evenly, just like you would with the tool rest, just like you would with the jig. But in this case, the body mechanics are the more important part of grinding. When freehand grinding, your support hand does provide pressure to the belt, just as much as your offhand does. And in this case, 
with me, especially because I'm uh, a little bit of a bigger person, <laughs> a lot bigger person, I can use my stomach to provide some of the pressure. The most important part about grinding freehand anyway is that much like when you're hammering, the closer you are to the instrument you're using, the more control you have. You basically want to be sitting right on top of the grinder when you're grinding. You want to be over the top of the belt almost, looking straight down the, the platen. The reason for that is because you want to be able to have a perfect idea of how much material you're removing from that edge. The reason the tool rest uh, grinding allows you a little bit more control, uh, a little bit less uh, you know, concern is because you can actually step back from the grinder and to the side and have that same angle on the platen that you would having over the top when freehand grinding. But freehand grinding requires that you be over the top because you need your body behind the blade. The other part is, is you don't want to be rigid when you're grinding. The arms shouldn't move that much. It should all be in the body. You should either be bending the knee or working the hip to get that perfect grind line. What you shouldn't be doing is grinding like this because then the belt has all of the control, your wrists aren't that strong so they're going to end up wobbling and that's how you end up with wobbly grind lines. If you want a straight clean, clean grind line on your blade, you need to be as close to the belt as you possibly can. I normally grip with the thumb on the blade and I grip my finger underneath the blade and then pressing on it with my thumb. Now that means that your finger is going to be near the belt, that's true, and it will heat up quite quickly, but this is the best way to have control over the blade. If you're just pushing on it like this, all that's going to happen is the, blade, the belt is going to grab it and shoot it out from underneath your fingers and your fingers are going to shoot right into the belt. <clears throat> If you try and grab onto the handle and grind like this, you're not going to be able to control your angle or where the material is being removed. And so what's going to end up happening is you're going to have wavy bevels. The only way to really grind accurately is to position yourself four square to the grinder, place pressure on the belt, and then move your body, continuing to have that same level of pressure along the whole blade, rotating slightly out for your tip, and finishing the grind. So I'm going to show you how I do that now. Now I know I wasn't using my respirator for that short segment, but I only did two passes and I will put my respirator on when I do the rest of my grinding. But uh, for this, uh, for the speed of filming this, I'm uh, kind of leaving the respirator off for a little bit of it. But as you can see now, that bevel is nice and clean, the grind lines are straight, there's not much wobble, there's a little bit of wobble up here, but I think that's actually from when I did the uh, tool rest grinding. And the reason for that is because I put a lot of pressure on the blade. Uh, one of the big th problems that a lot of people have when they get into belt grinding is that they don't push hard on their grinder. Um, the harder you push, especially with ceramic belts and especially with high speed grinders, the harder you push, the cleaner your finish will be. Uh, for the tool rest, when you're using the push stick, you really want to be burying that push straight into the belt. Basically, you want to be trying to push through the platen with the stick. And it's the same when you're grinding with, uh, with freehand. You want to be leaning into that. You want to be really putting pressure on it and really ripping that material off. And that's the only way to get a seriously clean bevel on your blades. Now, obviously, being that it's a worn out belt, you will probably still have some kind of deviation in your belts uh, in, the, in the grinds. But with a clean belt, with a fresh belt, you're going to end up with nice, perfectly clean grinds after heat treat. Um, and it's really important that you don't be scared of your grinder. The, you, the biggest problem that a lot of people have uh, with grinders, I think I've said that a lot now, <laughs> there's a lot of biggest problems that people have, but uh, one of the biggest problems that I notice with a lot of people is that they don't trust their grinder and they don't trust themselves around their grinder. Uh, the grinder is to be respected, absolutely. <laughs> 
but um, it is not something to be feared. You need to have confidence in using the grinder, otherwise the grinder is just going to walk all over you and you're going to end up with wobbly grinds, which is never fun. Especially if you're trying to belt finish your blades, if you want nice clean bevels on your blades, you need to have that confidence, you need to really get in there, put a lot of pressure on, and rip that material off. So there you go guys, the basics of belt grinding. Uh, now I will be doing a more in-depth tutorial for my patrons, uh, these wonderful people right here, um, that will go into hollow grinding, using the contact wheels, all that kind of stuff. So if you're interested in that kind of technique video, then uh, head on over to my Patreon. Uh, you can subscribe for as little as a dollar a month. Um, the $5 and up get all of my access to my videos 24 hours before they come out. Uh, and you also get access to some of the deep dives that I do. So, uh, go on over there, join my Patreon family if you're interested in getting more in-depth stuff. But otherwise, hopefully that helps you with your grinding. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask them in the comments, because I'm always happy to answer questions uh, when they come to me. Also, uh, if you are interested in following me on Instagram, Facebook, or anything like that, where I do add a little bit more uh, cover on what I'm doing, what I'm getting up to, and also techniques, um, then hit the description uh, down below, and there's all of the links to my uh, social media down there, as well as my Etsy store, my Redbubble, where you can buy my merch. Um, <clears throat> with that being said, I hope you liked the video. I hope you have a fantastic week. I will be live on Saturday at 9 a.m. Australian Western Standard Time, as usual. Uh, if you want to see more from me, hit that subscribe button. Make sure to hit the bell notification icon to be notified of when I upload new videos, just like this one. And I will see you on Saturday. Cheers, guys.